Hey guys, it's me, Mario. And I forgot to turn off that AC. Hold on a sec. Turn that off. <coughs> hey guys, it's me, Mario. And today, we're going to continue Beast Quest. Soltra, the Stone Charmer. Chapter 5. Reunion. Tom was caught up in a huge spare hug by his aunt and uncle, and for a few moments for and for a few moments he forgot all about the danger they faced. How many of you escaped? he asked. Villagers step stepped out of cover and stood uneasily around him. Their faces pale and anxious. Yet she knows. We're all safe, said Uncle Henry. All those who ran, all those who ran, he frowned at Tom. But how did you know what had happened? Tom looked on, Tom looked thoughtfully at his uncle and aunt. And the gathered villagers. Alderu had always told him not to talk to the ordinary folk of Ventia about the beast. Beasts. But people from, from Irinol had it been turned to stone by Sultra, and the others, others deserved to know what she was. He raised his voice so that everyone could would be able to hear him. What I'm going to tell you is the deepest secret all in all of Eventia. And no one must ever speak a, of it outside the village, he told them. I am under the guidance of Wizard Alderu, advisor to the king, to King Hugo. I have come here with my friends Elena, Storm, and Silver to kill the stone charmer, an evil beast. There was a murmur of amazement. Uncle Henry stepped forward. You are the true son of your father, he said uh, solemnly. Solemnly. And I, and I see from your face and... From the weapons and armor you bear, that you are ready for your challenge, he smiled grimly. Tell us what we should do. It made Tom feel proud that Uncle Henry knew he could be trusted with such an important task. Soltra seems to have left the village for now, he said. We should go back there for... Rest and food. If I am to defeat her, I need to know everything that happened to Irin in Irino. <coughs> when the return... <coughs> When they returned to the blacksmith's house, Aunt Marina warmed up a stew she had made, while Uncle Henry told Tom and Elena how a village boy had seen Soltra a former Gretlin at sunset, and had to run to warm the to, to warn the others. That is how how most of that is how most of us managed to escape for before the beast came. Aunt Marina said, 
As she ladled the hearty stew into wooden bowls for Tom and Elena. So Soldra appeared at sunset last night, said Tom. The, that could mean she can't survive in the full daylight. It would be her one weakness. It's already late afternoon. Elena pointed out. The sun will be setting soon. I know, Tom said. We don't have much time. He looked at his uncle. We should lead the villagers to the shores of the lake for safety. The lake, Uncle Henry said in a puzzling voice. But if she comes to us there, we'll have deep water at, ba at our backs. How will we escape th then? How will we escape then? The old tales say the water has healing property, healing powers. Tom said, perhaps it will be enough to save the people of Irino. Elena looked curiously at him and learned to whisper in his ear. And leaned to whisper in his ear. I thought you didn't believe in that story. I'm prepared to believe in anything right now, he murmured. But shouldn't we find the beast and kill her straight away? Elena asked. We will. Tom said firmly, but but not before the villagers have been taken to safety. We'll spend the night at the lake, then we'll find Soltra when the sun comes up tomorrow. We'll be more vulnerable. She'll be more vulnerable then. Word was quickly sent around the village that people should prepare pro provisions for the night. Provisions for the night. Then Tom led the villagers through the woods to the shining shores of the lake. It looked beautiful in the golden light of the setting sun. Hemmed with tall trees that were reflected in the wide, still waters. Looking out over the glowing expanse, Tom could almost believe that the lake really did have healing qualities. He certainly hoped so, but even if the lake had no special powers, at least the people were away from the village and Perhaps harder for Soltra to track down. <coughs> it took a while for the large camp to settle for the evening. The sun went down and the stars filled night. And the star filled night turned the lake silver. But there was no sign of Soltra. Maybe the lake's waters were protecting them. Small groups of villagers sat around fires, toasting bread and roasting jacket potatoes in the embers. <clears throat> Sometimes a few voices rose in song, but there was little laughter, little laughter. And Tom... Uh, eh. And Tom could... Almost feel the subdued fear simmering. Tom and Elena sat at a fire with Uncle Henry and Aunt Miria. Silver was curled up close to the flames, enjoying the warmth. Storms stood quietly close by. So, Tom, Uncle Henry asked. Will you be staying here once you have defeated the beast? Tom shook his head. I have to find the rest of the golden armor, he 
said sadly, though he was happy that his uncle had such faith in him. He didn't add, he didn't add that the dark wizard had stolen the armor and that a fearsome beast guarded each piece of it. His aunt and uncle didn't need to know about that. They would only worry. The fires died down. The villagers prepared for prepared for sleep. Soon, only Tom and Elena, and their animals, and their animal friends were awake. I'll take the first shift, Tom said to Elena. I'll wake you when I can't keep my eyes open anymore, any longer. Elena nodded. Will Soltra come? She, a she asked. Tom stared into the trees, knowing the beast was out there somewhere. I hope she does, he said. Soltra attacked my home. Well, while there is blood in my veins, I have to conquer her. <clears throat> and that was chapter five. Whew. He's getting close to meeting her. Very close. But yeah. <sighs> when I'm done with I don't know what uh what to say in these outros, so Ugh. Ugh. My goodness. Hope you guys enjoyed my read through Beast Quest. And I hope I will see you in the next one. <laughs> right. Bye-bye.